Hey humans, Coach Nate here with another mindful focus. This post reads, even though you can't always control when or if intrusive thoughts pop into your head, you can control how you react to them. Our minds are supercomputers that sit on our shoulders, capable of uh, creating the likes of which Stephen King would be envious. We know this if we've lived inside our mind for any period of time. Uh, there are studies that estimate we have about 6,000 thoughts a day on average. Now, if we take out the time of sleep, just say it, make it eight hours, that could be just shy of 400 thoughts an hour. And that can vary still depending on if you get less sleep and if you're an overthinker. That is a lot of thoughts. That is a lot that is swirling around in our heads at any given time. Know that thoughts are going to happen. There's, there's no escaping it. Um, and unless you're, I mean, even still on some type of hallucinogenic substance, then those thoughts can really get squirrely. Um, we simply need to accept the fact that thoughts occur. The thought process, as um, I read described by Dr. Caroline Leaf, just a fascinating, um, her, her, her book was switched off my brain. Uh, it talks about we develop a thought and then we develop an emotion around that thought and then that turns into a behavior and an action. So first we have a thought, then an emotion around that thought, and then action and behavior. And too often we go about trying to change things at the action and behavior. The ship has sailed at that point. The barn door is open. The bus has left the station or train. We are better served to address, at, address things when the thought occurs before developing an emotion around that thought. If we can switch to a different thought or influence that emotion, is it a thought, is it fact, we stand a much better chance in working through this bombardment of activity that occurs in our head all day long at a constant repeatedly. I'm not telling anything you don't already know in terms of thoughts. They can work us up into a tizzy, just a thought. We can take a single thought and it can induce anxiety, probably thinking about something in the future, either imminent or further off. It can induce depression when we start replaying events of the past. Thankfully, yesterday ended last night. So those are, we learn to let go of those a little more manageable. So in terms of the how on the let go, live now, when, learn to hear your thoughts. What I mean by that, if, if you're hearing it, that's not you. That's the crazy person that lives in your head. Give them a name if you need to. Call them Bob whatever. And if you're able to say, ah, that's Bob talking. It's not who I am. That's not me. That's, that's the resident that I can't evict, but they live there. I'm not going to listen to them, especially in here. So one of the ways you're going to know that they're inconsistent. They're wildly way over here and then way over there and then way up there. They're all over the place. That's very different than that still small, quiet voice, small in volume, but giant in presence that instills peace, that imparts wisdom, that cautions us gently without causing unrest. Two different voices. Maybe the guys on the shoulders that hang out, the one with the horns and the one with the halo. Um, then if we can then learn to act on the thought before the emotion, so when the thought surfaces, oh my, this is going, stop. Before, you know, the, the, the what if often, I, I refer to it as the what if monster. So if you're just dealing with 
how am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to pay the mortgage or the rent? How am I going to, what if, what if a car breaks down? What if I don't get accepted into the, what if something happens? All of those, we, and those thoughts just pop up. Sometimes it's something we see, hear, and, and then we attach an emotion to that. There's where we get into trouble. It's not necessarily the thought. It's when we attach the emotion because the emotion then drives behavior. So we can, there's a, there's a, a process, a strategy, if you will, um, in, in, uh, in, 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 psycho, in psychological theory that's called, it's called thought stopping and replacement. We have a thought, we stop it dead in its tracks, and we replace it with a different thought. It could be something completely unrelated to the, what we're thinking. Oh, hear a noise in my car. Oh, what if my car, but you know, the sun is really, it's so nice to feel the warmth through the window. Oh man, the, 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 we hear that things aren't going well financially with the company. What if there's layoff? I'm so glad and thankful that when I, I woke up this morning, I was able to enjoy a nice cup of coffee. Or... Even if you want to continue with that same thought pattern, it's when it's, what if this doesn't work out, change it up. Well, what if it does? What, 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 if, what if I don't get that promotion? What if you do? What if my relationship, this, this argument, um, causes, um, having this conversation causes friction in my relationship what if it improves it what if that person doesn't like me what if they do some some way how whether it be gratitude for something and it can be small just initiating that positive mechanism in our brains can shift our thinking literally from the negative to the positive. It said that physical activity studies report that when we walk, our, 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 uh, our, our bodies produce, they call it a hope uh, molecule, that actually can lift our mood. So if, if, it's a, if it's a lot of overwhelming thoughts, it behoove you just to walk. Walk around where you're at, stairs, outside, something, and regenerate thoughts that serve you versus those that frighten you or depress you, give you low mood. Gratitude and thankfulness are big wins. If you, if you sit and you think about something you can be thankful for, you, you'll find it. There's, there's something. It may feel hopeless. It may feel that that's not the case. But inevitably, there is something. And once you find one, you'll find that it has many friends many others that you can, and it doesn't have to be, I won the lottery. It can simply be, I appreciate today. I didn't think I would make it to today. There have been things in the past that I thought that was it, that was the end, and wow, look, here I am. Finding something that shifts the momentum and the focus in your favor gives your, your whole being ammunition to combat that are your own are trying to attack you. No, this, this is not about ending negative thoughts. That's not with the numbers that I gave you. That's not realistic. It's a really it's about reducing, mitigating, managing, and minimizing, taking back control over them versus them having control over you and then coping through. We're all in this thing called life. We all will have various experiences. Having the tools that helps us to navigate through it helps make that process a better experience. Just sharing some insights with you. Feel free to, to try it or toss it. Both of those can be correct answers, the right answers. Only you can determine which of those is right for you. If you like this content, feel free to give a like and a subscribe so you know when I post additional content, you're made aware of it. And if you know somebody that could benefit from it, please do share this with them to help and enhance their life experience and their journey. And as always, always remember to let go, live now, and win.